the lead singer from Hurricane. And they invited me on stage, and the rest is history. His life off stage. A lead singer in one of the most popular bands in Florida. Everybody wants to feed you cocaine. And the price he paid for a shot at the top. Well, for crystal meth and rock and roll, I left my family and I never looked back. On today's 700 Club. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. What was the movie? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll? That's what they talk about. Well, Bob Calhoun was on the fast track to rock superstardom. He could almost taste it. Only one thing was standing in his way. His family. But not for long. Bob left his wife and son. Never looked back. We were on our way. We started opening up for bands like Foghat, Blue Oyster Colt, Pat Travers, Molly Hatchet, John Kane Stepwolf, The Outlaws, Red Rider. We were in negotiations with CBS Records to sign a record deal. Bob Calhoun's quick rise to fame started in small town Iowa. In high school, he excelled in swimming and theater. After his performance in the musical Hair, Bob was approached by a member of the group Hurricane, a popular rock band in Florida. So the following Friday, I went to a bar and they invited me on stage and the rest is history. Bob's vocal talent was just what they needed and their fame started to grow. There's a line outside all night long to get in. The, the deck out on the ocean was packed. And, you know, it's the 80s. A lead singer in one of the most popular bands in Florida, everybody wants to feed you cocaine and uh, marijuana. And it just took control of my life. Marijuana was my drug of choice. Um, I became addicted to cocaine, uh, not only in, in the high of it, but I, I, my mindset was if, if, if this is a drug that I'm going to do, it's highly expensive. How can I do this and not pay for it? Ah, I can sell it because I do know some people that are buying it. So I started selling cocaine, small amounts, to get what I was doing for free. The band was offered a record contract and began touring with some of the top acts of the day. But just when the band was about to break out, they imploded. A couple of the band members we're missing their girlfriends. We had a huge concert set up, and two days before the concert, uh, the drummer and our other guitar player left in the middle of the night. There was no band to come back to, so the first thing I did was, what, what do I know how to do? How do I know how to make money? I started selling cocaine here and there. Bob met Lisa in 1986, and they married two years later. Their son, Timothy, was born 12 weeks premature. For the first time in his life, Bob began to pray. I was on my knees pleading uh, day in and day out. I was trying to cop a deal. I'll give up rock and roll. I'll give up drugs. Just let my son live. Timothy lived, but Bob forgot his foxhole prayer. Realistically, at that time in my life, it was all about me. Um, and, and at that time in my life, not knowing who God truly is, I, I thought I could just pull a deal with him and back out. As his addictions got worse, Bob started stealing cars and motorcycles. It was like a rush, you know, an adrenaline rush. Bob joined a new group called Trilogy, and he got a shocking offer from their promoter. And he said, look, you know, from the day I heard you, uh, I've told you you're the greatest rock and roll singer of all times, but honestly, I don't think you're ever going to make it. He said, I believe your wife and your family's holding you back. He said, I'll tell you what, you can come live with me. You don't have to pay any rent. Just sing. So for crystal meth and rock and roll, I left my family and I never looked back. I was to the point in my life I could hit a, hit a red light. I had everything right there in my console, fill a spoon, drop the dope, stir it up, put a little water, crush it, pull it, shoot it before the light turned green. One night, Bob and a friend were stopped in a stolen car and Bob was detained without bail on an immigration charge. I was born in Germany of American parents on an American military base. I'm an American citizen. But for some reason, there was an immigration hold on me. The immigration hold was just a ploy to hold Bob. What they really had on him was undercover surveillance of the last two and a half years of his life. 
He said, following you is like going to a candy store. You led us to hundreds of people in the drug world. He was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison for robbery, theft, and probation violations. There I was sitting in county jail, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I remember calling my mom and saying, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to figure this out. Send me a Bible. So his mother sent him a Bible, and Bob read it. He also stumbled upon a small paperback book. I remember uh, getting a book on the library cart, More Than a Carpenter, by Josh McDowell. And I remember reading it. And, and, and I think at that moment, the Holy Spirit almost became awake in me. Because I read this book and I thought, how could this intelligent man who didn't believe take these men and travel the world to prove that the Bible wasn't true and in doing so become believers? How, how is that possible? And that little simple book gave me enough incentive to go, man, I need to rethink this. Bob decided to go to a chapel service at the prison. I walked into this building and there was a convict standing behind the pulpit preaching the Word of God like he was Billy Graham. And although there were maybe 50, 60 guys, as far as I was concerned, the room was completely empty. And he was talking to me, forgiveness, hope, born again. And I'll say this man's name, his name is Keith White, doing life for murder from Iowa. This man from Iowa was going to lead this man from Iowa introduced me to Jesus Christ, not a story in a book, not, not a song, but a Jesus Christ ready to take me for who I am and for what I am to come in to my life and change me from the inside out. And I got out of prison December 31st, 2001, on fire for God. Bob never touched drugs again. Today, he's a single dad raising his daughter, Eden. Bob is a territory manager and technician for a mobile medical company, and he and his daughter live in Iowa. Being sold out for God is amazing. And if you're sitting there as a skeptic saying, I've tried this, I've tried that, I went to church, I did this, and, and nothing's changed, you haven't truly sold yourself out. There's always going to be highs and lows here on earth. This is not our destination. We are promised paradise and an eternal oneness with God. The story is the God of the universe, the creator of all, can take you as you are, whatever you've done, no matter what you think you've done or you're not worthy, and take you and give you hope, life, a future, and, and show you there is a better way. The God of the universe will take you and show you a better way. Listen, God loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. And you can be at one with him if you just surrender to him. His power will overcome anything that's in your life, any habit that's there, whether it's drugs, whether it's pornography, whether it's anger, whatever. He'll clean you up and make you a new person. That's what it means to be born again. And I'm going to ask you right now, I want you to pray with me wherever you are. Right now, let the Lord come into your heart. Pray these words, Jesus. Pray with me, Jesus. You know what I've done. You know who I am. You know all the problems. But right now, Lord, I open my heart to you, and I ask you to come in. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Live your life in me, and I will live for you, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, for those who prayed just then with me, I ask for the power of God to come into their lives. I ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fill them from this moment on. Amen.